print a massive day. Uh, what does it mean to you and the Roosters? Yeah, very privileged. You know, since 2002, I think we've been playing on this day. So, uh, yeah, the celebration, I think everyone enjoys obviously coming to the ground and we do our different services in the morning, but they get to experience and say thanks uh, before the game. And then we get to uh, say thank you through playing rugby league. So it's um, yeah, it's a special day and uh, the boys can't wait to get out there. And those jerseys, um, the story behind them? Yeah, so the, the blue or the Bondi blue as we call them now, they're obviously rationing during the war. It got, you know, from 1939 to 45, it got um, tougher and tougher as uh, to, to get product into Australia. And in 1944, they, you know, the rationing of all things, they just only had enough dye to to tint the jersey enough uh, to just to get a little bit of blue in the jersey. So uh, yeah, they wore that 1944 and 45 Premiership victory as well. And then uh, we wore it at different times during the 60s as well. Um, so it, it's been great to bring that back out again. So obviously a big day for a returning player, Angus Crichton. Um, yep. You obviously think that he's um, a strong person individually. Yeah, he's, uh, he's worked hard this year uh, to uh, to get himself right off the field and, and to go through what he needs to do and, and, and get uh, his life in order. He's been training all, all through that period um, and keeping physically fit. So that, that has never been in question, the, the physicality that he was going to play with. Um, and we've seen a guy that's trained really well, um, fit back in physically well, and, and we feel like he's right to go. The value he brings to the side it must be huge. Yeah, it is. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a good voice for us to have. Uh, he's a strong line runner, um, he's a physical player, and he's an Australian player. So uh, for us, uh, we've missed him, so to get him back in there has been, uh, been really important this week. Is it earlier than you expected or forecast? Yeah, it's hard to... Uh, there wasn't a timeline on, on this. We, we weren't really sure at which speeds things were going to go. And, um, but, you know, we've, obviously that's not my decision. There's a... There's been a medical decision before it got to me, um, and then um, all the OKs were there, and then it got to me around the footy decision. So, um, yeah, we've ticked all those boxes, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, he's right to go. So, you know, it's a never-ending path, um, as far as I know. So, uh, but it's great to have him back on the footy field and doing what he loves. It's a part of, uh, it's a part of the process as well. And Angus spoke yesterday. Is, is it a positive that he's already talking about playing well enough to put himself in origin frames and being that representative player that you mentioned? Well, I think that's always been a part of him and, and, and his desire to be the best possible player he can. So um, if he's talking in those terms, that means that, that he's really focused on playing and that means that his goals are very clear. So, um, yeah, that seems like a really good mindset to be in. Any reservations to start in? You no, I thought I thought it was better to get him started. You know, between him and Satili, um, as I said, physically he's really good, and I felt like um, him getting out there the way that I've seen him train over the last month as well. Um, he's hit his mark continuously, so uh, that's been really good to uh, to see, and and to get him out there to start's been yeah, it was a it was an easy choice actually. Joey Manu as well. Yep. Um, it's, not, it's not a gamble anyway, is it? No, I don't think it is. I think um, Joey's played enough footy. He's played enough footy in lots of different positions. Um, centre, full-back, 5'8". Um, he's had roaming roles. Um, he's got great understanding of the players and the, and the team around him. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's come quite naturally. But it's also, you know, we need to give him... Um, you know, the space there to, to, to allow Luke has to take the responsibility to run that team and, and allow him to get into the game uh, as he sees fit. Um, because even though he's played many games, uh, you know, we want to we allow him to, to feel the game and express himself how he wants. How did Sam go yesterday? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it was good to go out there and, and see him run around and uh, we had an indifferent performance uh, from our reserve grade, so we want to do better there. But um, yeah, it was good to see him get out there and, and uh, play lots of different styles of play and, um, and work out how he wants to, to sort of run that team. Can you give us a little insight into what it is you're looking for him and did he do those things yesterday? Uh, look, there's some things there that we've gone through which I sort of won't go into with, with you guys, but um, 
He's, uh, yeah, there were some things that he did really well and some things that I'd like him to, to improve on, like any game, like any player. It's the same um, with uh, whether it was C.Y. Wong or Nathan Brown yesterday, the, the same things uh, that you go through. Uh, we were okay yesterday. We would like to perform better. Um, and so, yeah, there, we'll keep working on that part of the game. But uh, I think I said on the weekend that the, 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 the trust and the belief in him is quite clear. He's a 20-year-old. Um, he'll continue to progress a lot over the next sort of few years of his career. So uh, this is just a part of it. Do you feel it kind of gets overblown a bit, Trent? Like you change, change, change your Never. Maker. <laughs> but, but it's not the first time you've done it, right? Like the, you've mentioned Joey Manu, I think Luttrell as well. You, you've given spells in reserve grade to, to yeah. get to that level. Like you've... Yeah, I think, I mean, that's the beauty of the, the interest that's in our sport, and, you know, the the 24-hour news cycle. We like to create that interest and, and that's why we watch the game. So that's definitely not a negative. Um, you know, sometimes I wouldn't like to always have to go through it every single day, but um, but that's the place that we're in and um, that's the interest that we've got in our sport. So that's a that's a positive. Well, tomorrow, obviously, the Dragons haven't been going great, but they weren't going great last year and they came up and rolled you over. What are you expecting from them? Yeah, just... Uh, you know, I've been watching them pretty closely uh, this year and um, yeah, we know what to expect. We know where their, their strengths and weaknesses lie and uh, a lot of this week's been around us, obviously focusing on uh, changing combination and, and some new guys getting in. So it has been a back to our style of play and focus on that. Um, but we know what to expect and we're looking forward to it. They play quite a sort of conservative style of footy and you struggled with that against the Dolphins in round one. So is that something that you worried about in terms of the way that they're going to play versus the way you play? No, I never worried. I'm looking forward to it. What happens if uh, Joey and Luke do succeed as a halves pairing in terms of Sammy? Um, I think it's been reported that rival clubs are already looking, I guess, as people do whenever a player drops out of the 17. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's no crystal ball here. There's just uh, let's let's play tomorrow and. Um, you know, a lot of speculation around, but let's go week by week. Trent, do you feel, I don't know, maybe the decision to move Joey to, to 5 8th as well, like, did you feel you were getting him enough ball? Like, is it, we saw it back in the last year, how <laughs> devastating he was playing in the spine. I think that's been the, well, he wasn't playing, he played a couple of games there in the spine. I think he played against Dragons uh, last time. Uh, he's played fullback, obviously. Um, so there's been a, a couple of different occasions and that's always the case when you've got a centre of his quality um, and you know, knowing that you, you want him to get the ball. So we changed that with him last year about that, that roaming and, and he had one of his best years that he's had um, uh, definitely in the Roosters jersey and then backed that up uh, at the World Cup. And so that roaming aspect was a real benefit to, to our game uh, and to his game. Um, but some of those traits are going in a more, uh, you know, in that 5'8 role is, is a little bit clearer and, and he's consistently in that spot. So, um, yeah, we, we need to, to give him space to, to own that role. But, um, yeah, looking forward to sort of just getting a really strong team performance tomorrow. So you imagine Sam will be in second grade for the foreseeable future. Is he back in the mix next week or where do you see that? At the moment? Every player's in the mix every week. Just on Anzac Day, the last yep. one for me. Um, has your approach to it changed over the years? I mean, it's such an emotional day and, and the build-up can be, can be big. Have you learned anything over the years of trying to prepare a player for, or a team for Anzac Day? Oh, I think the, there's a couple of things. Our, our role on Anzac Day is to play footy. That's the Roosters' role, the 17 that go out there. So there's a lot that, that happens around it, which is amazing, you know, which is the most wonderful day. But our job is to go out and play footy. But there's also an opportunity to educate in this week as well. So we've been able to do both. Is We've been through that education. We'll have lunch with the ADF uh, rugby league team that'll play before us today uh, at lunchtime. Uh, and then we'll go out and play footy. And, and that's sort of been consistent the whole way through. I mean, I imagine as a young coach getting ready for Anzac Day, are you, are you more hyped up than you are perhaps now? Or? It's a, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, there's been obviously different. You have different turnarounds. We've got 11 day. You have five days, depending on the when the 25th falls. So, yeah, I've done lots of different things depending on the mood of the team. And um, but uh, yeah, we we're pretty clear about how we wanted to prepare for this week.